In September 1995, the Merseyside and Harbour Company sacked 500 Liverpool dockers who refused to cross the picket line. Despite living several hundred miles away in London, Pauline Bradley helped build a docker support group that organised marches, pickets, raised funds and utilised the unique skills of the radical environmental activists Reclaim the Streets. I mean, if there's enough people who are motivated enough to support a strike, um, then there's plenty that can be done. Um, and in some ways, um, people who are not on strike, who don't work at that workplace, um, have got more freedom often to, to speak up, to um, publicise the, the dispute, um, to, to organise demonstrations to organise solidarity kind of pickets. One thing that the Liverpool Dockers asked us was to organise demonstrations. One time they came down and said that they'd been on strike for nearly a year, they were getting demoralised, they needed some, they needed a boost and Christmas was nearly around the corner and could we organise some kind of demonstration um, to give them a boost. We collected money. Uh, those of us who were active in our own trade unions, uh, we would try and um, get publicity in our own trade unions, uh, move motions so that the whole of the union branch, and then later on hopefully the whole of the union, would support the Liverpool Dockers. We organised a picket of um, an office of a company who was organising scab labour. They were basically organising people to uh, go and work at the Liverpool docks and take away, which was taking away the Liverpool dockers' jobs. Um, and we discovered that their office was in London and so we went and picketed it every week and the Turkish and, and Kurdish comrades that we were with, they had this mega, megaphone that had a very loud uh, kind of siren on it and we'd get there and this siren would go off and it'd be really loud and the police would come and they'd kind of, what are you doing? And we'd explain to them why we were picketing and so on. Um, but we only did it about two or three times because when we turned up the following week, they'd gone. And so we considered that, you know, we'd... That, that was a victory, a little victory, because it, it had perhaps become embarrassing for them, having us picketing them every week. The reason why Reclaim the Streets um, got involved and, and why we decided to um, approach them was initially because um, Chris Knight, uh, who was at the time a lecturer um, um, in anthropology, uh, quite a lot of his students were very active in Reclaim the Streets and um, were doing very radical actions like occupying motorways um, and they were succeeding, they were succeeding in getting publicity and they were succeeding in um, in some instances of getting roads not built. Chris pointed out this link that w one of the reasons why the Liverpool dockers were in dispute and why the management um, were didn't like them much, why the management want to, wanted to get rid of them and casualise them and, and, and get workers who were less militant was because they'd, they'd campaigned against, for example, they'd campaigned against having uranium um, dumped in the docks. They'd, uh, so they'd stopped uh, uranium from being brought in and um, probably from the dockers' point of view, it was health and safety reasons that they didn't want to be offloading uranium. Um, but, you know, from an environmental point of view, you don't want uranium sat there in the docks either. On the first year anniversary of the, of the dispute, we had three days of action in Liverpool and Reclaim the Streets were very involved in those three days of action. We had a big picket, we had people going into the grounds, climbing onto the roof of the Mersey Dock and Harbour Company, climbing up the uh, the gantry uh, of, of a big crane and just, um, you know, making a lot of noise, creating a, 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 big, a big scene. Um, and there was quite a lot of media there. We, you know, we had contacted the media, and they did uh, come along, and it did get onto the news. And that that was one of the main um, reasons why we put we all put a lot of emphasis on this three days, because again, after one year in dispute, 
um, the Liverpool Dockers were getting tired and because of the censorship, you know, it, it was getting difficult for them. Um, so the fact that it did get on the news um, meant that a lot of people heard about it who hadn't previously known about it. And uh, after that three days of action, quite a lot of support came in, quite a lot of money came in um, from people who hadn't previously heard anything about it. It did work well getting Reclaim the Streets involved uh, because they had a lot of experience, but it was different from our experience. So their experience of campaigning, you know, um, doing things, for example, occupying the gantries, climbing on the roof, the, those were the kind of things that we didn't really do. We all felt that we were kind of a bit too old for that. <laughs> uh, but they they were really up for all of the, all of those kinds of actions. Um, so uh, it it worked very very well with them. And although you know at first the kind of different cultures, you know the industrial workers kind of culture versus the kind of young dynamic um, environmentalists you know, activist culture, you know, at first it was probably strange for both groups, but the will was there to to make this connection and to work together in a, in a constructive way. There were several times, of, uh, to my recollection, that dockers all over the world um, went on strike for the Liverpool dockers. So the Neptune Jade was a ship which... Um, was loaded up by scab labour at Liverpool and then it went off to uh, elsewhere. I think uh, the USA, cer certainly the USA and um, Japan were, were involved. Um, because those dockers knew that um, it had been um, loaded up with scab labour they, and they were supporting the Liverpool dockers, they, they um, refused to offload the ship. So... Basically, the Neptune Jade went sailing all around the world, um, and uh, you know, including the USA, where it didn't get offloaded. In terms of the impact of the London support group, um, the Liverpool dockers themselves were really appreciative of of, of us, and, and they've said themselves they wouldn't have been able to organise the amount of meetings and demonstrations and so on that happened. Um, if it wasn't for the support group, and and I mean we know that any any trade unionist or activist knows, you know that you have to use the the people and the places that that you have, and obviously Liverpool dockers, you know, do not work in workplaces in London. We achieved a lot through getting the publicity and getting um, financial support in our own in our own area. If somebody wants to set up a support group to support a local strike. Um, what I would say to them would be to obviously try and uh, make a good link with the strikers themselves. Try and keep your main focus being the needs of the strikers, the aim, what they think they need in order to resolve this dispute. And, you know, your job is to assist them and give, that, give the solidarity that they need um, to help them to, to win their dispute. This is a song that I wrote. It's about Doreen McNally, who was the chair of the Women of the Waterfront, who the Women of the Waterfront were um, the wives, mothers, daughters, aunts, women who were supporting the Liverpool Dockers. And um, I saw Doreen McNally speaking at a fringe meeting at a conference, and I was very inspired, and uh, I wrote this song about, about that. Have declined. 
Cause the dog has united you.